Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all doing well. And I hope you brought your popcorn, or your favorite snack, or your favorite drink, because today's video is going to be a long one. Today we're going to be ranting about the whole fitness industry. So the first major problem is that anyone can be a coach right now. Literally, your mum, your next door neighbour, your dad, anyone can be a coach right now on social media. They can use Instagram, they can use Snapchat, they can use Facebook, any kind of social media platform, and they can put their workouts out online, and other people will see it and go, that's a good exercise, I'll copy that exercise. But the person that's doing the exercise in the first place, so say your, your mum was to be in the coach, if your mum was doing it wrong on the workout video that she put up on Instagram, and someone else has seen it and gone, I'll copy that exercise, and the technique is awful from the first video, the technique's also gonna be awful in the second video. And so people are learning bad technique from looking at other people doing the techniques. And this way more people are getting injured, more stuff is going wrong, and they're not following the people that have got the experience, the qualifications, or the knowledge on the exercises to do it. So bad information is getting out there because other people are trying to be fitness people, seeing it as a good way to get money, because it is a good way to get money. Like, you don't have to work, you're doing fitness and you're getting paid. But the downside is anyone can do it. Anyone that looks good or has good genetics, put a workout plan out and they'll get millions of clicks because they've got abs and they're looking good and they're lean. But what they don't realize is genetics have done that. Now, there's definitely people out there which genetically they are gonna be lean, they are gonna be skinny. I guarantee everyone out there watching this has a friend that is always skinny and always lean no matter how much they eat. And that's just down to their genetics. Their body literally wants them to stay skinny and to stay lean. So the people that struggle out there to stay lean or are genetically built to be bigger are gonna be looking at them going, oh, I wanna be like them. And they're gonna follow their plans and not realize it's genetics that's done that. And so they're blindly gonna be following their plans thinking, oh, I can get lean and I can get abs from this now. When a lean guy over here doesn't even need to work out to look like he has. And he's just making a workout plan just to sell it, just to make money. That's how easy it is for people like that to get money. You look at people like V Stred, for example. He's lean, he's skinny, he's got good air, and he looks good. But he doesn't know anything about training or about fitness. And he's sold a million plans, maybe even more, to people out there that are thinking, look at him, I want to be like him. Where if you even look at a little bit of the science or a little bit of facts that he actually mentions in his videos, all of it's completely wrong. He seriously doesn't know anything about nutrition. He also mentions about training to your body type. Now, I've never heard about anyone else train about their body type. You train to grow muscle, you don't train to your body type. You could be an ectomorph, or an endomorph, or a mesomorph, they're the body types. And either way, you're gonna stay being an endomorph, but you're just gonna be a bit more muscular. But this isn't a rant about him. If you wanna see more ranting about him, I'd definitely recommend Coach Greg. I'll put a link down to his channel in the description. He goes into why Reshred is completely wrong, why most fitness people is completely wrong on there, so definitely check out that channel and find out a bit more. And this could be honestly one of the biggest issues in the fitness industry, because you're getting people that are couch potatoes. They sit there on the couch all day, every day, and they're in the comment sections, typing away, saying all these tips and tricks on people's posts that are 300 pounds, trying to give them advice. If this guy's 300 pounds lean on the stage at 300 pounds, and another guy's on the couch being 300 pounds of full weight and not having any muscle at all, the advice there is useless to him. It's probably all wrong advice as well. People literally think, oh, I know the best fitness tip. Even me as a personal trainer who's trained five years, I get people that have trained two or three weeks and they come up to me and go, oh, have you tried this? It's really working for me. How do you know if it's working for you if you're only done for two, two three weeks? Give it a few more weeks and you realize it's not. I even had a mate of mine say, oh, I've been trying out this new workout plan. What you do for it is you work out for 10 minutes once a week. Now, even the people out there are thinking, what the hell, you can't just work out 10 minutes once a week and be ripped and shredded. Now this guy was ripped and shredded, but he was only ripped and shredded because he was genetically ripped. He's always looked lean and always been shredded. This one workout plan has not changed the way he looked, but he's there talking to eight to 10 people about his new training plan, the 10 minutes a week training plan. And everyone's believing because he looks like that. Now me being a personal trainer, I was intrigued. I was wondering what's going on. How can 10 minutes be better than three hours a week, for example, or five hours a week of training, for example. Myself doing five to six hours a week of training was interested in how he was doing 10 minutes a week and thinking he's gonna get leaner than I am or he's gonna be training harder than I am or he's gonna be losing more weight than I am doing five to six hours. And so I asked him questions 
with him not knowing that I'm a personal trainer myself. And he told me his diet, he told me his training, he told me what he was doing in them 10 minutes. It turns out what he was doing was he was eating only 1,500 calories a day. Now the recommended average for calories a day for an average man of his height and his weight is 2,500. So he's eating 1,000 calories less than what he should be eating. And he's saying that this one training plan of doing 10 minutes a day is what's getting him lean. Not his diet or the fact that he's in a 1,000 calories deficit. And it's stuff like this that really winds me up. People giving you recommendations when they don't actually know what's going on. When they don't know any biology, when they don't know anything about building muscle or losing weight. They barely even know any exercises or the techniques for the exercises. Mind you, that's not saying people shouldn't learn or people shouldn't try and help other people. But I'm just saying, if you don't know something, don't make up some random crap and say, oh yeah, that's going to work. Look into it, find other people that are doing something that's working and help them out that way. And I think the reason people do give out random bollocks is because everyone's looking for that quick fix. They want to get abs in two weeks. Like you look all over the YouTube and there's how to get abs in two weeks, how to get abs in six weeks. There's all these quick fixes. When people haven't realised that there is no quick fixes when it comes to diet or training, it's going to take a while. I don't think my dad who's 22 stone is going to get abs in two weeks following Chloe Ting's two week ab training. It's just a load of crap. It's people trying to sell you plans, trying to sell you training programmes, trying to sell you nutrition plans for money, saying, oh, I've got a quick fix, I've got, I found the solution. I think every local Dave has said, oh yeah, I found a solution to fitness, look how healthy I am, look how fit I am. When they don't know anything, and they're only healthy and fit because of their genetics, and sometimes they're not even healthy and fit. They could be the biggest bloke on the street and they say, oh yeah, I found the new fitness trick. It's just a way for them to get money. And you've just got to look at people and go, do you really though? Start asking some questions. Find out if they do know anything about fitness. Now the classic one and my favourite one is the six pack shortcut guy. The guy that tells you, oh you're going to get a six pack in six weeks if you follow this plan. When he then got tested for steroids and was positive. He was taking testosterone, Tren, all these anabolics to help him get lean. And he's telling you, oh yeah you can get lean in six weeks. You can get abs in six weeks. When secretly he's taking all these stuff. Same again with like Matt Does Fitness, David Lean, uh, Lex, L Lex Little. They're all taking steroids and they're all hiding it. You look at their physiques, you look at their strength, and it's a crazy transformation. For example, if you just look at David Lane, at one point he was lifting about 620 pounds from a deadlift. Now if you look at his age and his weight at the time, he's probably only like 5 kg away from being the world's strongest deadlift at his weight and at his age for a natural competitor. So why wouldn't he then go and compete in a powerlifting meet or try and get the world record? Because he's not natural, and he's having to hide the fact that he's not natural, because he's obviously selling you Gymshark products, he's selling you plans, he's telling you to do all this stuff, and saying, oh yeah, look how many gains I've got, look how strong I am, claiming to be natural when he's not. And this is one of the biggest issues in the fitness industry, is everyone is taking something. You look on Instagram, all the people that you think, oh, he must be taking something, probably are. And you can look back in their journey and see that they've, from one year, they went from being frail and tiny to now jacked within a year and it's just because of the anabolics they're using like how Matt does fitness went from powerlifting to bodybuilding and now he's looked exactly the same throughout the five years of YouTube that he's been doing and he stayed that lean throughout no matter how much food he's eaten he stayed that lean we've never seen him look different at all and that's because one photoshop and two anabolics he's using anabolics to look like that you can't li naturally look like that for five years without being a psychopath because no matter what you're going to be wanting food you're going to be hungry your body's going to be changing and some years he's actually gotten bigger than what he was before and he's never actually had an off season he's never actually got chubby he's always stayed lean but just gains muscle and you're probably wondering how has he's done that he's just increased his anabolics the guy's probably been on the guy's probably been on testosterone for the last five years and just cruising away on testosterone and stay in that weight, and stay in that lean. And same again, if you want to find out more about certain individuals and if they're natural or not, check out Greg Doucette, which I linked obviously in the description, like I mentioned earlier. He, he does a video on each individual, talking about if they're natural or not. Most of the time, they're not. But yeah, it's definitely a good watch. He will definitely give you a lot more facts and information than I have. But yeah, I'm just ranting along about fitness at the moment. So 11 two points alone, that pretty much tells you the fitness industry is crap right now. Anyone can do anything right now, within the fitness industry, anyone can take steroids and sell plans. There's no rules or regulations on any of it. 
And there really needs to be some rules and regulations. Like, if you are taking steroids, you need to be saying you're taking steroids. Like, if we look on Instagram, and we see all these online coaches. Now, there's some really good online coaches out there, like Josh Bridgman, and there's some really bad online coaches out there, like Reshred. Now, if we look at Josh Bridgman, he's not got a qualification. I've got a qualification, but he doesn't. And I would say he's probably got more experience in the gym than I have, and probably knows a little bit more than me. But he's got no qualifications. Now, the fact that he has no qualifications really annoys me because as a PT legally if something happens in front of my eyes face to face during my, one of my PT sessions I'm liable for it but if something happens on his case he's not liable for it because he's just given online information and he's just given online training plans he's not liable if they injure themselves or if they have a problem where I would be liable face to face if someone had an injury right in front of me I'm liable for it and that kind of annoys me because it gives the chance for online coaches to give out a load of crap, to not care about their clients, to not be face to face with them, to not be honest with them, to not show them the actual right way, to not show them the techniques, to just wing it. Half of them give out plans that they've given out to everyone else before. Half of them aren't making customised plans towards you or your goals. They're literally just giving you a crap training plan that they've made for other people before. And they're just copying and pasting it, copying and pasting it, copying and pasting it. You're probably getting the same plan from an online coach than someone did three years ago. They haven't changed the plan, they haven't upgraded their self, and they haven't made it specific to you at all. And that's all the problems I have with the fitness industry. There's a lot bad with it, there's a lot good with it as well. But I definitely think them three things for sure need to be sorted out. And I hope you agree with me. If you did, leave a comment down below, like the video, and subscribe for more. I'll try not making any more rants, but I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys next time.